In this video, we're going to be talking about utilitarianism. Sort of like the categorical imperative, utilitarianism is a framework through which we can try to determine whether certain actions are good or bad. In this case, we're going to be looking at the effects of certain actions and whether those effects are good and bad and using that to determine then whether the actions that we took in order to produce those effects are good or bad. There is a TV show uh, called The Good Place. Now, the idea of this is that the, the main character has passed away and has ended up in what's called The Good Place because her actions throughout life were good, as opposed to The Bad Place, where you end up if your actions are bad. Now, the way that they determine whether or not you end up in the good place or the bad place is they look at all of your actions and they assign those actions a numerical value in terms of how good it is. A good action has a positive score and a bad action has a negative score. And if the sum total of all of your actions is positive, and not only that, but if it's a certain magnitude that is greater than zero. If it's a pretty high number, you get to go to the good place. And if it's a bad number, if it's less than zero, then you end up going to the bad place and that's where bad things happen. Now, the good place is touching on this idea of utilitarianism, where the morality of an act is determined by the outcome of that act. An act is considered moral if they maximize happiness or reduce suffering. Good acts cause more good than bad, and bad acts cause more bad than good. And in the good place, you end up in the good place if the sum total of good you have caused in your life is greater than the sum total of bad you have caused in your life. And vice versa, if you have caused a sum total of of bad that is greater than a sum total of good, you're ending up in the bad place. So utilitarianism on paper sounds like a good idea, right? You want to cause more good than bad. You want to minimize harm. You want to maximize happiness, all of that kind of stuff. So why don't we take a look at how we would use utilitarianism as a guide to determine our actions. So for every possible action that you could take to address some kind of situation. Let's say you have three different choices that you could take when faced with a certain problem. For each one of those choices, what you have to do is you have to quantify how much good will result from that action. So I'm going to produce X amount of good into the world if I do, if I take this choice. You then also have to quantify how much bad is going to result from that action because any action could have negative as well as positive consequences. So you need to figure out how much good you're going to create and how much bad you're going to create. And then you need to determine the net good that taking this action will produce. And this actually ties in a little bit to the idea of margins that we were talking about in the earlier videos, where the margin is equal to the value that you're getting from a system minus the cost that you have to put in in order to create that system. Well, here we're looking at the amount of good that we're putting into the world minus the amount of bad that will result from making a certain choice. And then once we do that for every possible choice we could make, we choose the action that will create the most net good. Pretty easy, right? All we have to do is make sure that Whatever action we take will produce the most good while also minimizing how much bad we'll be making. We want to make sure that the amount of good minus bad is the highest we can make it. Great. Well, I like this idea of utilitarianism because I want to, well, I want to maximize good. I want to minimize bad. And I like this idea of being able to compare the amount of good certain actions will create and using that to choose the right action. So I think this is a great ethical framework. 
why don't I try applying this to a specific problem? Well, this is what is known as the trolley problem. So say that you have an out of control trolley, it is barreling down the tracks and there's no way to stop it. You have five people who are in the way, who are tied to the tracks, they are unable to escape, and the trolley is going to run them over within seconds. You have the option to divert the track, to make the trolley change direction onto the other track down here, but it's going to run over one person instead. So, let's think about this from a utilitarianism perspective. If you don't move the lever, if you don't divert the trolley, five people are going to die. If you do divert the trolley, one person is going to die. So, with utilitarianism, the choice to not move the lever results in five deaths, and the choice to move the lever results in one death. It should be as simple as moving the lever, only one person dies, five people get to survive, you have done your best to minimize the damage. So you've minimized the amount of evil that's in there. Under classical utilitarianism, you have made the right choice. Here's the part where we start thinking about, well, who are these people? What if that one person was one day away from curing cancer? And those five people, well, were not one day away from curing cancer. Then would your action not have caused more people to die because cancer has not been cured? The amount of delay that has been given to the cure for cancer because of the, of the death of that person and the amount of people who have died in that delay because you have decided to move that track and to make the trolley run over the person who would have possibly saved all of those lives, lives were it not for getting run over by a trolley, does that make you responsible for those deaths? And then from there, does that mean that because more than five people potentially have died from cancer, does that mean that your actions now are more evil than the other choice of letting five people die. Well then, you know, let the five people die, let that one person cure cancer. But then what if one of those five people would have, you know, done something amazing for the world in another way, right? There are so many scenarios where the cut and dry just kill one person or kill five people becomes a lot more complicated and utilitarianism would have you consider all of those scenarios but there's a lot of possible scenarios and if you only have seconds to do it can you really make the optimal decision at least the optimal decision under utilitarianism what i'm trying to get at here is utilitarianism has a really good idea in principle where you want to do more good than bad, even if you take an option that might seem evil up front. For example, pulling a lever to decide to kill one person instead of five, there's the possibility that the amount of good that you might do could outweigh the bad. In this case, killing one person instead of five people could be a scenario where the amount of good outweighs the bad. However, there are times where this idea can be really, really tricky, and it can get into these really complicated situations where maybe, you know, when you're sitting down and thinking about it, when you actually have time to figure out who everyone is and what their deaths might mean to the world, the amount of good and bad that are out in the world, you know. Maybe all of that is easy to do when you're sitting down thinking about a problem, but if you have 10 seconds to make a decision, a utilitarian framework can overcomplicate things to the point where that decision is taken away from you. 
One might also argue in the case of the trolley problem specifically that, well, you aren't the one who tied the people to the tracks and you aren't the reason why that trolley is running out of control, right? So it, then every decision, any decision that you can make, are the consequences really your fault, right? If you accidentally kill someone who would have invented the cure for cancer, is it really your fault that maybe a bunch of cancer patients could have passed away because, you know, the cure, the person who would make that cure for cancer was strapped to the tracks of a trolley. Um, some would argue that that's not your fault. And in that case, whether you choose to pull the lever or not, that doesn't fall under morality because, well, it, it really is just the fault of the person trying to, you know, tie people to tracks in these weird philo uh, philosophical games. So that's another possible thing to think of when it comes to an example like this. Some questions we can think about when we're talking about utilitarianism as a guide is how can you quantify good? Is it the amount of people who you will make happy? Does it involve the amount of happiness that you are giving each of those people? How do you quantify bad? Uh, can you really quantify good or bad as numerical values that you can then compare with each other? Who determines what is good or bad? This is kind of something that you see in a lot of ethical frameworks is if we're trying to figure out whether something is good or bad, whether if we're trying to figure out whether something should be universal law, right? Who gets to determine all of that? We have to think about people's differing moral compasses, their different beliefs, the experiences that they were raised in, when we're thinking about good or bad here. How can you possibly know exactly how much good or bad your actions will create? How can you possibly look at every single possible consequence? How can you look at every single possible choice? Maybe there are some that you just don't think about. And if you happen to miss the correct answer under utilitarianism, does that make your actions unethical because you haven't done the best option just because you didn't know what the best option was? If the consequences of your actions lead to someone doing a bad action, does that make your action bad, even if it was possibly good to start out with. So these are just food for thought. The textbook uh, presents a scenario and they talk about how you can use utilitarianism to address that scenario. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get you to think about utilitarianism, engage with it on a level that the textbook isn't asking you to. With any ethical framework, there are examples of why that ethical framework is good to use and examples of why it might be bad to use and this is why ethics is not a solved problem because there are always examples but there are also always counter examples and utilitarianism is a very huge subject there's a lot of people who have done a lot of work in it there's classical utilitarianism but there are also modern developments in utilitarianism some of which try to address some of the concerns that I brought up. I introduced a very basic view of utilitarianism here, and there is a lot more that you could possibly research if you so choose. Not that that's a necessity. I know that this class has a lot going on as is, but if you are interested in this, there's a lot more reading you can do into utilitarianism, but it's always worth thinking critically about it. That's the brief ethics discussion here. I recommend you do read the textbook regarding that ethics session, section because it has that, like I said, it has another applied example that you could use. It's a really interesting applied example that they talk about, actually. They talk about the use of um, bots on a dating website, uh, whether or not you should use bots to maintain interest, if only for temporary, a temporary amount of time until you can get more users on your dating website. It's a cool story, and it's actually based on stuff that happened in real life, so I would recommend looking at it.